Turbulent hurricanes, freezing cold winters and heavy rainfall. If you believe the latest data from meteorologists, we're in for a lot this year. And it all has something to do with a very special weather phenomenon. If you want to know how La Nina will affect not only the climate in South America, but also the whole world, then stay tuned until the end to find out all about the potential dangers. Thank you, friends, and welcome. Winter is coming. It's not just the protagonists in Westeros who are dreading a bitterly cold and long winter. Here in the real world, the thermometer could drop extremely low this year too. Hopefully in contrast to my subscriber numbers, and if you are as enthusiastic about science as I am, then I would be very happy if you subscribe to the channel now and help me reach even more people with my videos. Thank you very much. That a cold winter is now set to hit the real world like a Westeros. According to data from meteorologists at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, who believe that there is a fairly high probability that a drastic weather phenomenon will pick up speed in the second half of the year. La Nina is returning, bringing with it a cold winter, significantly more dangerous hurricanes and probably catastrophic flooding, which in recent years has caused not only crop failures, but also numerous deaths in the affected areas. Researchers assume that La Nina will begin between June and August, so there's not much time left. Oh god, let's go shopping. Before we panic, let's take a look at the facts behind this phenomenon. Inseparably linked to La Nina is the even better known phenomenon El Nino. So let's first clarify what this weather is all about. And you thought weather small talk was boring. El Nino is a climate phenomenon characterized by anomalous warming of surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific. The name goes back to Peruvian fishermen who named the weather phenomenon after the Spanish word for the Christ child as it occurs there around Christmas time. El Nino is part of the so-called El Nino Southern Oscillation Cycle, which describes the highly complex interactions between the ocean and the atmosphere. But what exactly happens during El Nino? It's another one of those phenomena. You hear about it all the time in the news, but you don't usually understand what it actually is. But I've done some research for you and tried to explain it clearly. During an El Nino event, the surface temperatures in the Pacific Ocean are around the equator rise significantly and there are shifts in the atmospheric circulation patterns which can even cause different weather phenomena around the world. So let's first take a look at normal conditions outside of El Nino. Normally the trade wind blows from east to west across the tropical Pacific, pushing warm surface water westwards, causing the warm water to accumulate near the coasts of Indonesia and Australia, for example. Over a longer period of time, large amounts of warm water can therefore accumulate in the western Pacific, which then automatically leads to an increased surface temperature. In concrete terms, the water off Indonesia is warmer around Christmas than off the coast of Peru, for example, and this is due to the trade winds that push the warm water westwards and thus drive cold water up from the depths of the ocean off the coast of Peru. Incidentally, this is part of the famous Humboldt Current, named after Alexander von Humboldt. However, El Nino can cause the trade winds to weaken so much that the Humboldt current is also affected and warm surface currents suddenly flow back eastwards. As a result, the Humboldt current slows down and then almost comes to a standstill. Off the coast of Peru, the water then becomes very warm and the cold water from further down no longer reaches the surface. This actually has drastic effects on the environment. The plankton dies and many food chains no longer function properly, and the increased evaporation can also lead to heavy rainfall on the western side of the Andes. This in turn leads to landslides and flooding, putting the lives of the inhabitants at risk. On the South American coast, an El Nino phenomenon causes the East Pacific to warm up and the water in Australia and Indonesia to cool down as a result. Normally, this leads to an area of high pressure in the Eastern Pacific and an area of low pressure in the Western Pacific and the air currents, also known as the Walker circulation, then push warm water from Southeast Asia to South America. That was a very rough outline. However, it is important to emphasize that the mechanism behind El Nino is really highly complex, about as complex as finding the right Arancini recipe, except that it's not about rice varieties and the doneness of eggplants, but about more epic things like ocean currents, air pressure systems, and atmospheric oscillations that contribute to these phenomena. When I hear that, I'd rather become an Arancini tester than a meteorologist. So now I've been talking about El Nino all this time, but this is supposed to be about the climatic counterpart La Nina, which is inextricably linked to El Nino, and what the researchers are predicting for La Nina this year doesn't sound so good. Between the El Nino events, which incidentally do not occur regularly every year but at irregular intervals, the female counterpart also appears on the scene from time to time. According to the researchers, La Nina is set to replace El Nino this year and then pick up speed between June and August, and even have a massive impact on the weather in Europe. 
The researchers expect an 85% probability of this phenomenon occurring in the very near future. La Nina will have a strong influence on the world's oceans. This phenomenon is characterized by cooler surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific. In contrast to El Nino, where the water warms up, during La Nina, the water in the equatorial Pacific cools significantly and atmospheric circulation is strongly influenced, which in turn leads to increased precipitation in some regions, such as Australia and Southeast Asia, while other regions, such as North America, may tend to become drier. Researchers are very good at predicting climatic changes, and they have already found that the typical current El Nino patterns have changed or even disappeared, which is not at all unexpected. The researchers now assume that the warm surface temperature anomaly will continue to decrease and reach a neutral level by June. In addition, the researchers have discovered changes in the depths of the Pacific that also indicate that El Nino is weakening further and La Nina is taking its turn. For example, a so-called Kelvin wave moves further eastwards and continues to rise, causing colder water than usual to reach the surface. But it gets really exciting when we take a look at the effects of La Nina. We now know that the phenomenon causes changes in atmospheric circulation. We can only really determine the effects once El Nino has gone completely to sleep. Nevertheless, Researchers have recently discovered something very concrete. The hurricane season in the Atlantic will tend to be more active than in previous years. This is due to changes in the wind from the surface to the atmosphere. This is known as reduced vertical wind shear, and these are exactly the perfect conditions for hurricanes. But that's not all. The climatic conditions of certain regions are intensified by La Nina, which means that there could be heavy rainfall in Southeast Asia, for example, while entire areas in South America could dry out. The west coast of North America is likely to experience unusually high temperatures, and we will also feel the effects here in Europe. For example, the foothills of the stronger hurricanes could also reach Europe. This means that we should prepare ourselves for stormy times. And not only that, it's also getting colder. In 2010, for example, we experienced very low temperatures for many weeks, and La Nina is likely to bring such cold weather to Europe again. So we could possibly be looking forward to a snowy winter and a white Christmas. Of course, it is not yet possible to say with certainty how La Nina will affect us, but the trend is clear. It will be colder and drier than we are used to, and this year's winter will probably not be so disgustingly warm and wet. To be honest, that suits me just fine. Let me know what you think. But we still have to keep in mind that these are all just statistics and that the location is far away from us. Nevertheless, the researchers are keeping an eye on all the climatic conditions here. And as soon as the weather situation changes or La Nina becomes more concrete, I will of course tell you about it immediately. But this is only possible if you follow the channel. So keep pressing the subscribe button. If you want to hear more about upcoming weather phenomena, click on the video below. It's also really exciting. And as always, please visit my Astro store and get the t-shirts from the videos. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.